Hello and welcome to Trash Arts Tick, Season 3, Episode It, with myself, Ryan, we got Sam, and we got Jackson. So this week, guys, a um, little treat for y'all, we're actually going to be joined by Jessica Hunt. Um, she's been on the show before, discussing various different things, and we've worked with her uh, through various different films, most notably The Truth Will Out and uh, Lonely Hearts. So she'll be joining us shortly, and we're actually going to be talking about everything witches within films, and uh, whether or not they're, they're good, and what kind of defines a witch film. And uh, yeah, having a little discussion. So without further ado, let's crack on. So guys, this week we wanted to discuss witches and um, what are kind of good witches films, what makes a witch film, and um, yeah, kind of just flesh it out, discuss. Like I said, we're joined by Jessica Hunt, which is awesome. Um, so in terms of witch films, or what kind of springs to mind for me, first and foremost, is actually a film that my sister was obsessed with whenever she was a kid. And that's The Wizard of Oz. If we didn't watch that two or three times in a day, then, you know, she wasn't having a good day. Um, yeah, and, like, The Wicked Witch of the, the West. And, um, I don't know, just the whole imagery of the way that she was and, you know, the mannerisms, things like that. It's the first image you think of when you think of the witch when you're a child. Green skin, big old pointy hat, broom. The nose. Big old nose, yeah. yeah. And it's crazy that that image has stuck with people. Even if you haven't seen The Wizard of Oz, you know the wicked. You know what the witch looks like. You know. Yeah. Or you at least know some of the um, iconic imagery within the film. You yeah. know, with the 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 wicked witch of the east who gets crushed by the house and her legs hanging out from underneath the house. She's got the ruby slippers and then they roll up and stuff. And it's like, oh, okay. Even if you hadn't watched The Wizard of Oz, you kind of know that that was witch related and from that film. Mm. So a little, a little secret about me, uh, one of my last plays when I was in school um, was The Wizard of Oz. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. yeah, I played the scarecrow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. I thought you were going to say you were the witch. <laughs> I know. It, part of me was like, oh, damn, that would have been cool as well. Um, but yeah, and I was the, I was the scarecrow. And a uh, uh, little inside knowledge, on my uh, second night, of performing, which was the night that I performed in front of loads of my school friends, I had my big song, my number, and at the very end of it, I did a roly poly, but my trousers split. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard this story before. Yeah, I just realised I've heard this story it before. It wasn't a great start to the show because there's the there's beginning. two parts, isn't there? There's the first half and then the second half. So my number, because I'm the first character. Dorothy meets. So as you can imagine, I've got the whole first act with my butt crack on show to my whole school year. Wow. That's, yeah. Uh, that, uh, that's changed the image of the Wizard of Oz to me now. Yeah, well, for me too. For me too. It's not the um, it's not the first witch depiction though of like in movies wise, like but just before that, like that was like nineteen thirty nine. Was so, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, in 1927, there was a Norwegian film, I believe it's Norwegian, <laughs> uh, which is kind of a documentary, kind of a docu-horror mockumentary, it depends on what perspective you see it on, called Haxen. And Haxen was one of the first films that looked at what, what witchcraft really was. It was almost like a revisionist point of history to go, these people have been called witches by these witchfinder generals, but actually... In its very dated sense, they call it women hysteria. <laughs> but you know, it's very dated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's an incredibly like sexist look at sort of witches, but at the same time, sort of uh, progressive for mm. like the the step forward of like you know, oh, these weren't magical women, but they were still women. <laughs> and it's, it's still got that sort of yeah. It's interesting how that changed though, because in the 1600s and um, so the 17th century, whenever people were getting you know prosecuted for witchcraft and stuff like that, you'd have men and women. So being a mm. witch was actually associated with both sexes. Yeah, yeah. So it's weird how it then became a stereotypical. Oh well, you're a witch, you're a woman. And the equivalent to that for a man would be a wizard. But you wouldn't get a man being trialled for, oh, you're a wizard. It's like, it's really well, bizarre. Because again, like, a lot of it's always to do with the fact that it's a strong woman. And then they call them a witch. At yeah. least back then. Especially when you have such religious dominance. In, if you're thinking of it like in America in particular as well. America was a new country. So they had that religious dominance. 
And if you were either not of that religion, so a Wicca or just interested in nature or not religious or whatever, or for any sort of idea against men, then you're a witch. And like the, the Haxon kind of demonstrates it quite well with, um, well, I think it's one of the priests that wants to seduce the woman. And because she won't give in to it, then she's a witch. She's been dancing with the devil. Mm. It's not only that. I think religion is definitely a massive influence of witches. But after watching a documentary recently, um, what I found that was quite interesting is that people back then did believe in like spells and you know certain things and potions and stuff that they could almost manifest that were for good. But yeah. then the flip side to that is that oh, if someone did them wrong, they might do the kind of potion to you know curse someone. Mm. Um, and it was a lot of times, like it was very heavily, well, in England anyway, it was very heavily um, run by Protestant ruling. And if you're a Catholic, sometimes you're um, revered as like a heretic yeah. and a witch. And like it's just crazy to think that you know someone could have a different thought and a different opinion, and yet they were being, you know, burnt at the stake because of that. Was it like in a moralistic sense with when going back to films kind of thing with that whole sort of curse idea it kind of reminds me of um, Drag Me to Hell and although she's kind of a witch she's like an evil it's kind of a modern gypsy. take well I wouldn't say modern take because it's just um, a more a European Eastern European take as it were you know yeah um, and it does play with that morality idea that she's like done something wrong to that woman so in response she gets Cursed three times them. a lot worse which um, again um, the craft that, that I was going to say the three thing. times is a uh... It's quite common because it's the idea of the of of magic in general is that it's almost like it works like karma, yeah. you see, and it's like whatever you you want to be careful with what you put out there because it will come back to you three times. Um, but uh, I was gonna going back over what you were saying, like what uh, you were talking about in terms of the uh, the hearsay uh, story. Has does anyone remember the Crucible? Yes. Yeah. 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 That's the perfect example where you don't actually see any witchcraft, but it's the it's the gossip, the um, the narrative where the, the the seed has been planted of doubt of you know we're we're amongst something unknown. Yeah, and I, I think in that one as well, like in in the Crucible and and um, the craft as well, it sort of plays into that notion of of witches being. The, the rebellious kind of mm. uh, woman that's not going to sort of just do exactly what a man tells them to or anything like that. And I think that that, inter inter that sort of like is part of the, the relationship of the way that, that witches have been sort of perceived with like fear and, and like, yeah. you know, that kind of uh, horror-esque kind of attitude. Because... You know the things that men presumably would have done to these women are going to come back on them threefold, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. sort of like why it's such a horrific idea. Um, it sort of comes like uh, to me, it's sort of similar to when you see certain uh, uh, other films that do things with like the working class, for example, where you know you'll see peasants as sort of like the the nasty mob kind of thing. It's it's that kind of uh, bringing that kind of uh, horror to. To people that that you know, some at some point, my actions that I've put out into the world are going to come back at me. Mm. What I find really interesting though is that, like, whenever you talk about a witch, I don't know about you guys, but I know for me, you automatically think dark and evil, or you know, they they've got some sort of bad bone in their body that has driven them to do this. You know, you, you never think, oh well, they're. They're going to heal me. You think, oh, they might curse me. I think it depends <laughs> on the context, especially if you're talking films. If you're watching a horror film, then you're probably assuming there's going to be an evil witch. In reality, there are obviously lots of nice, normal people who are Wiccan and consider themselves to be witches. You think of and, like, you know, most witch films. They're horror-related, and the witches are generally evil. Even if you think of more... Um, I wouldn't even say toned down, but like kids' films, Hocus Pocus, yeah, mm. they're considered like properly evil, and you know they're gonna eat children and stuff yeah. like that. Like even that stereotype to witch is crazy, but you never see like a. I think Bewitched is probably the only one where I can think. Oh, that, yeah. that started off as like a, a TV show and. And Sabrina. Yeah, yeah, um, but Bewitched. Whenever they did the film with uh, Will Ferrell, yeah, like. It's one time where it's, oh, she's a good witch. 
and she's doing good things and stuff like that. And sometimes she has a little bad streak, but it's never really... It's played for laughs. It's never really like a curse. Well, I think... I think it's like, like Willow in um, Buffy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. How she turns. But that's it. It goes back to what Jack was saying earlier about the idea of being scorned. And like, when I think of uh, The Witch, the 2015 film by Robert Eggers, she's in the woods. She's basically mm. almost like Mother Nature and she's just hiding out in the woods whilst towns and worlds being developed around her and their religious restrictions kind of make them go away from it, don't they? Because they're mm. so religious that they can't even be in the town there. And the depiction of the witch in that is terrifying. And it's more down to the brutality of what you see at first, then followed by this seductive allure of the witch to bring the people towards her. And then, of course... Uh, Sorry for spoilers, but <laughs> by the Probably end, yeah. it goes into more, you know, like the whole family are convinced that she's Satan's child. And when she actually becomes a witch, she actually feels more free and more relaxed than she probably ever has in her life. I covered my ears, so I didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to not have the spoilers, I see. Well, it, it's, the, it's the same thing, really, if you, if, you, if you actually look at it in terms of the storyline of, of how the witch has been evolved through time it's, it's the untamed woman yeah yeah definitely isn't it it's the one that um religion is basically their, their order and she's chaos yeah she's the unpredictable she but then, can't be controlled yeah the the weird ironic thing about that is that she's not the one changing the world around her would be changing so like in films like that you know and even in like history whenever you, know, you have a new king come in or a queen, and like they decide to put their own like authority stamp onto their rule, etc. They're the ones that are changing everything, not the person who's like meant to be a witch. So that's that's that's, that's interesting. Like that's a kind of a weird dynamic because even though they're changing stuff, they think, oh well, that person who's suspectedly a witch, they're wrong because they're well, not with the times. There's also like this thing with, with witches of it being sort of an ancient, uh, you know, religion or ancient idea that's come like long before Christianity and other yeah, such yeah. things. Like, um, And I think that it's like, it's almost like that fear of uncovering something that's been buried. Like, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it, it's something that's out there as you're developing further and further out, you're going to come across these you know, new things. Um, well, the perfect example in that regards of that sort of hierarchy to show, again, very powerful women who are completely in control, Suspiria. Yeah. Um, I'm going to talk about the original Suspiria because I haven't seen the remake. I don't know if you caught the... I have. That, yeah, you've seen the remake. Have you seen the original? No. So, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be having different conversations about Suspiria. <laughs> well, yeah. It'll be interesting. But it'll be cool. <laughs> and I haven't seen either. <laughs> so with the original have a more more of your ears covered <laughs> yeah yeah with the original Dario Argento's like it's it's a fucking insane opera of chaos and brutality of in all the senses from the lighting from the sound from every single everything but in the in the heart of it is a witch story yeah. and they're powerful female witches and all the male characters are kind of under their control yeah. and of course you've got the contrasting main storyline of the ballerina who's mm trying to like just survive it really and i think that's something that 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 film uh, like i love about that film a lot is that that sort of uh, idea of the witch's coven controlling that dance studio like that being their like uh uh essentially their headquarters i suppose yeah, yeah. for lack of a better word what, what, what would you call that well, the, the, the which is HQ. The, the actual coven, yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose, yeah. Because that's it, they're a coven. And like, there's the other thing that witch films always have, and that film definitely has, is that idea of a hierarchy. Because you've mm. got the Madame, I can't remember her name, but the main evil older woman who they're trying to protect yeah. and keep alive. But... Oh, yeah, she's creepy. And that's it, they're, I know, because there obviously are things that do translate over to the remake. Do, um, because they still have the hierarchy, don't they? Yeah, it's at the very end that you, you only meet her then. Yeah, same in the original. But it's like you get hints of her and there's always that feeling, like even just that scene where they're all just like sleeping out and you can just hear her breathing. Mm. And it's such disturbed breathing and you're just like, what the fuck is that thing? <laughs> and you, you know you're in a witch film straight away, especially in the original. It's like literally the lyrics to the songs are screaming, witch! <laughs> if you're in a witch film and you're just like, oh shit, what am I going to go for? I wonder for? what this film is. It just like. never lets go of you. 
And I think that's the interesting thing with the idea of magic in itself. If you were under a spell, you would, you know you're under a spell. Where's it well, going to take like, you? It makes you think as well, like what kind of uh, spells are we already under? Because like, if you're not aware of being under a spell, like what, what kind of actions are you taking in your day-to-day -day life that aren't really sort of controlled by you? Even if it's not like controlled by some wicked witch out in the yeah. woods, like, you know, can't, but it does make you kind of think there's a, there's a whole idea in that of, of uh, your own... Uh, yeah, and your awareness of, of what leads your subconscious. Well, it's uh, like, um, to back that point up, if you think of the craft, whenever she puts that spell on your bloke, yeah. like, he's like, I love you. I don't know why. I, I just woke up one day and I, I felt like I loved you and I needed to be with you. And it, it's weird how that sort of backfired on her because it yeah. becomes really possessive. But you know what's funny is that women, by and large, they, um, compared to men, they're men are um men are very straightforward with what they want and they can sometimes be quite uh dominant whereas females they're very passive which therefore means that they're manipulative that's the normal way of females getting what they want so again it's like this natural uh habitual relationship that women the way that we communicate versus how men communicate and it's it's no wonder why because uh, the whole idea of being manipulative is that you're doing stuff in a way that makes someone think that they've come up with ideas on their own. Yeah. You see? So the fact that a, a female in a, in a witch form is able to cast a spell on a man and, and he, he just feels a certain way, he doesn't know why, that's a manipulation. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting with craft though, because with the dude, before she does the love spell, she he she basically won't go fair with him, so he gets pissed off because it's his expectation of what he's supposed to have. And then of course he says a bunch of crap about her afterwards, and it still kind of plays into that that idea of what you were saying. Then it's not manipulation; it's like his own way. It's all about control in some way. I think well, a lot of the dominance, power isn't sort of it? Thing. Yeah. He didn't get his own way, so to sort of show face, not that anyone would know, like whether or not he slept with her, like. He's still got to try and show yeah, fists because yeah. of his own yeah. subconscious. So he's like, oh, yeah, we did this. She was terrible. So it's like, yeah, I'm certain dominance again. Mm -hmm. He's taking control of that situation. It's like the, it's like a trope of, of the, the genders, really, yeah. isn't it? It, it, pulls on, it pulls on everyone's weak, weak points that are kind of inherited by how society invites us to conduct ourselves. But then there's always negatives that come with that. Which is, you know, men, their bravado gets the better of them a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And they want to save face in front of other men. I think that's why, like, um, whatever you do think of witch films, uh, I can't speak for The Witch, the 2015 one, but they seem to work in a, in a high school setting very well. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you think of... Um, young women or even young men they're not fully developed you know they're not thinking entirely like someone who is it an adult like a fully developed adult might think they they sometimes can be irrational and quite brash in their approach with different things and um, so whenever you have someone that can have that kind of power you see it with Nancy I suppose yes like they lose control and they lose sight of what it is they mm. originally wanted well, I think there's like an idea in that as well with, with in terms of, um, you know, growing older, like, you know, changes happening with your body and all of that kind of stuff. It kind of plays into that idea of like, you know, becoming something more and like, you know, having these kind of magical powers come along with that kind of thing. Um, but it's kind of almost too much too soon because you think yeah. about what a teenager has to deal with you know puberty and stuff the, the changing of the body there's a lot that happens yeah. over a short mm. period of time whereas then for the next 10 15 odd years rarely anything happens you know mm. you, you get older you might start getting facial hair you know you, you start Growing to age bold. a bit more yeah well, <laughs> I don't have that problem <laughs> it is interesting yeah puberty is definitely like a marker point for uh, and the reason why I think that witchcraft in particular comes up around that age bracket is because um, a lot of Wicca uh, talks about the stages that f the, f the feminine goes through. Yeah. Um, but it also talks about Lilith, going back to the religious side of things. So Lilith was, was the first Eve, if you like, but she was the Eve that said, I don't want to conform to being, you know, she wants to be equal to the male. Yeah. 
Yeah, I remember. I can't. I don't know the story exactly of Lilith, but I've heard the reference quite a lot in different things, and I, I've always been kind of intrigued by that. She's there. It's, it's, there's a lot um, known, and there's a lot that's unknown in terms yeah. of Lilith. Because a lot of, like I said, everyone kind of replaced her with Eve, so that everyone assumed that Eve was the first woman, but she wasn't. Um, so there's a lot of uh, hidden uh, history there. But, um, but she's, she's essentially associated with, with the original witchcraft um, area because of her story. Because she, she, um, she was a child murderer. Oh, flip. Yeah. That's probably where the, <laughs> the whole idea of eating children and stuff comes from. Yeah, exactly. So you see there's, there's loads of parallels and inspiration that comes from that story. Um, but a lot of it, again, it's to do with uh, how effective you are at serving as a female and whether you're going to bring children to the world or whether you're going to be a sexual you know sexual being for a male so it's more like what role are you going to play in the world as a woman but if you choose neither then you're scorned and that often leaves the last role which is witch you've um, yeah. you've seen there the love witch haven't you say that again the love witch i don't know it's it doesn't love sound familiar. hold on <laughs> so I'm a little Google I'll just watch it and I'll out. come back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the Love Witch is an interesting film. It's, uh, it's came out a couple of years ago, and it's it takes a very feminist sort of um, angle on it because she's a witch, but it's set oh, in the beautiful. 70s. It's very kitsch. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's a stunning film. Like it's all those beautiful like techno color sort of stuff that you'd get oh, back then. No, I want to watch this. I'm sorry, I haven't watched it. <laughs> oh, it's, it's this really interesting film because what you were saying there made me think of that because it's, because the film has a feminist angle towards it and it was made by a woman. It's from the witch's perspective. Ah. So you're seeing these guys who are very stereotypical 60s guys, but when the spell starts to take over, you see them changing for her will and there's a narration that's giving you literally her perspective on it. Mm. And I think it is interesting when you when you take witches into a modern context, especially with, um, you know, with like, with the, the way things are nowadays, there are obviously a lot more films that are trying to point out the inequalities that are going on, and witch films can be interesting to play with that. Definitely. And Love Witch does a good job with that. I mean, to be fair, so does The Witch by the end of the film with uh, Anya Taylor-Joy's character. She's, she's completely in control and she's happy and she's like floating in the air with all the other witches, isn't she? Oh yeah, that's a great ending. I wish you had warned me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's kind of like the handing over of this the submission a little bit to the devil, wasn't it? The ending. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think sometimes if the, if the narrative wants to give over to the witch in regards to not just making him the monster that needs to be taken away, you sometimes get a very different angle and you see really what's going on underneath as opposed to it just being there's a scary old lady who lives down the street, she's a witch <laughs> and she's going to mess things up. Because it becomes this real, like, watered-down version for a story that can be about female empowerment and power in general. And I think, uh, yeah, sometimes it gets a bit lost in that. Which kind of brings me nicely to talk about a truthful out. Yeah. Because that's what we, uh, <laughs> we, we try to do with our film. Yes, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's... Uh, the reason why it, it works so perfectly is because of the Me Too movement and... Um, and a lot of the time with, with witches, it's a sisterhood, mm, mm. you know, it's, it's the, it's, you're not, you don't, it's, it's normally a collection of women, whether they're, um, whether they're normally individual, but they're normally sort of part of a collective. So the, it's the joining of forces in some way. It doesn't always get depicted that way, but that is essentially what it is. It's a woman stepping into her power and owning her, uh, animalistic, urges you know and they're not always pretty they're not always good well that's it because i remember there was like three particular spells that you wanted to do to show like the kind of stages of, of for kayla's character in particular mm. she's obviously the younger one going into it and um going back to what jack was saying again the whole scorning thing <laughs> those sort of stories you have to you make the men it's like negative portraits of exploitation 
in some regards. Well, I think I think you just want to if ways. you're gonna if you if you're gonna do witches, you want to sort of like play into gender types quite. Yeah, a, you like, don't really you know, want to see a male hero within a witch story. It's like you're not really supposed. You're not necessary. Yeah, you know? yeah, because uh, uh, you know if you're gonna have a conversation about gender, which is something that which you know a, a witch film is always gonna end up doing in some way or another, um, mm. whether it wants to or not. Um, I think, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're, uh, doing that kind of thing, then you want to be able to have a conversation about how men mistreat women rather yes. than like, oh, how men, you know, worship women yeah, or yeah. something like that. I mean, uh, there's an element of that in there as well, but it's more like from a, a worshipping, uh, well, mistreating through worshipping in some ways. Mm -hmm. It's the fallen angel again, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's the, it's the... She's either a goddess or a witch, <laughs> depending on how a man looks at her. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a uh, it, it, either way. Like I said, you, you it's the, it's the two sides of the same coin. Either way, she's still powerful. Um, but one one is is more because she's reactionary, and that's the thing with with norm. Normally, when you see a witch scorned, it's reactionary. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So it's it doesn't like um I know Maleficent's not exactly a witch, but she is a witch. Yeah. Um and again, like the the fact that you the fact that Sleeping Beauty was already to always told one way, and then Maleficent came along to tell you her side of the story, and they did the same thing with Wicked. It's yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's the Wizard of Oz Wicked. Mm. It's kind of so nice you, to see that, where it's almost like, it was revisionist, isn't it? It's taking that idea of the witch as a frightening thing, and going, actually, let's look at it from her side and see how fucking powerful she was to make you frightened of her. Or just the fact that she that she wasn't always bad. Yeah, that's true, because if you're right, if it is from a scorned reactionary thing, there was a point when she was just doing magic for good in that regard. Well, if you yeah. go back to the truth, well, I obviously I wasn't involved within that project, and... Um, Sorry, there's very loud music playing outside. It's um, <laughs> weird. Can we go? <laughs> so yeah, with the truth, well, I, I wasn't actually involved. Um, but one thing from watching it that I get is that these witches aren't bad. There's nothing really that distinguishes them from, like, to be evil. It's mm. only the circumstances that they go through because of Kev's character um, that then they start to, you know, push back. It's yes. like, it's, you know, the... Kev's characters come into their turf, their house, Absolutely. their environment, and um, in a sense, it's it's kind of a bit home invasiony, because then he tries to take control of the situation to play into his hands, so he can get you know the best documentary or whatever, and um, and because of his actions, that ultimately causes a reaction, mm -hmm. and through a lot of different films, you never see it necessarily from the witch's perspective as to what that reaction you well sorry you only see the reaction you never see the action that's happened in the lead up to it i suppose it goes back to the idea of like you saying power sense like they're powerful and they don't need to be frightening or terrifying at the start you know they're already powerful but if you push them in the wrong direction you or you do something bad to them you're going to see what that power really is so that could be Absolutely. that could be as simple as like change you know, religion, if we yeah. go back to that point. Yeah. If someone is heavily religious in a position of power and they're trying to change the norm, then people are going to push back against it. Or not even change the norm, more like be accepted. Yeah. As they are. But up until, if you think about, like, history, up until the 17th century, witchcraft was probably a thing, but it wasn't, like, heavily... Um, scrutinised as what it became in the 1700s. You know, the, I think it was the last case of witchcraft that was tried in the UK. It was actually tried here in Portsmouth. And it no was yeah. in the... I think it was during the Second World War or the First World War. One, one of the World Wars. Yeah. And uh, this, this woman apparently uh, contacted the dead, uh, uh, you know, uh, regularly for people. And, and she... Um, she she basically told was telling people about this ship that had been uh, that had gone down that no one had uh, was told about it was totally confidential and because of that the navy um, took her to court and tried her as a witch and wow. that was the last what that was the last case. I thought she was just trying to be helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't want that information getting out. Makes you wonder what the information would have done rather than 
whether she was sharing information because there's it's always a, someone who's who's probably has something weird to say but it's maybe it was the information was more damaging who knows we would yeah. never we would never know because this is the thing a lot of people uh, respond badly to things that they, they want to keep secret well um, yeah if you think of uh, what's it called the witch final general which is a 60s film and essentially it takes you from that perspective of the witch final general as a corrupt man who rapes and pillages and has control and manipulates and gets what he wants. And when a woman finds out about this and wants to tell people, he then proclaims her to be a witch. And you see the trial. Mm. And it, it is really interesting to see, again, I always think like revisionists because it reminds me of Westerns, where you look at a real point in history and instead of showing this glorified or fantastical version of what it could be, what they were witches and they were doing the right job, you go, actually, once again, this is seeing male corruption having an influence on it. But even if you look at films where society starts to collapse and stuff or, or religious complete dominance take over, all it has to be is for one woman to just disagree with the ideas in place and you instantly get the, but I they're a witch. Even, yeah. you know, it's, it's such an instant thing. It's usually always when a woman wants to challenge. Well, they, have, they have to make an example of her, otherwise the others might follow. Yeah, exactly. And it's this, um, it's, it's cool when you see it from the more like, I don't know, like the setting that you expect to see that. So the Salem sort of setting, but, but seeing it from a reality perspective rather than, oh, but she's a, she really is a witch. So, you know. Yeah, I, I think there's a sort of um, whole, uh, the, like there's a whole thing in the history of that. And I, 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 I can't think of a film example, but it's an interesting idea anyway, is that, is that, that, that sort of like accusation of being a witch is, is so... Uh, um, like you can't you can't prove it wrong. Like there's no the way to sort of go it? like, oh, I can't prove that I'm not a witch, absolutely. Yeah. And that's sort of like why that like whole kind of uh, you know innocent until proven guilty kind of thing is important. And you know witch trials kind of show that in some ways because it just allows anyone to just say, oh, you're guilty of this, and until yeah. you prove otherwise, you are. <laughs> and the way that they used to get people to prove these things was so ridiculous it was either you either save yourself because you're a witch or you die <laughs> because they would they would do things like uh, push someone off a cliff wouldn't they yeah or they would uh, i think it was they would dunk someone under water for so long yeah i can't remember exactly there's, there's quite a few and and if they survived one they would put them through the other yeah and and it was like they just moved the goalposts every time so much it, of it, it is like that, like the way that they treated uh, the, these women yeah. was is based on like essentially f uh, logical fallacies, like just throwing a load of logical well, fallacies at mm. them, saying that's it, you're guilty and you're fucked. Because if you we think decided... of it on, um, the religious side of things, like the whole point of giving in to God, man, you give yeah. in to the man. And if you, <laughs> we've been reading some old Bible stuff for, for a film, and a lot of it is that women are like lesser valued from the beginning. Yes. And oh, the Bible of, speaks of women so kindly. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you, so if you think of that Freedom. idea with the, the witch finder generals and those characters who are saying, give in to God to prove you are not a witch and all that kind of stuff, it's yeah. given to man. And obviously mm -hmm. witches are a collective of women who come together with different religious perspectives. So it's like, it, it is that horrible thing of just gender. It's always mm. coming down it's, to it's it. Absolutely. It's absolutely. It's a gender war. Yeah. And, um, and let's face it, look, we're still in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I think it's interesting you've seen a lot more witchy kind of films kind of pop up recently. It clearly is a nice connection to the gender war as you described it. <laughs> Interestingly yeah. though, if you're talking about trials and stuff like that, in 1612, um, there was a, a trial for like a woman, her, um, her mum and like two of her kids. And at the time it, was, it wasn't right by law you couldn't technically have someone who was a child as a key witness mm. but they used the nine-year-old like uh, the daughter of the woman who was accused as a key witness okay and she basically turned around and they, she must have been prepped and stuff as to what to say but she like was the run of the um the household and stuff like that she obviously had some sort of animosity towards her mom and her siblings and she got them convicted and the, th the four of them mm -hmm. were hanged Whoa. And, yeah, and then weirdly enough, off the back of that and the writings and the findings from that trial, the law was changed. 
and it was rewritten that you can use kids as key witnesses. So from thereafter, <laughs> from I think it was like 16, 18. A lesson to learn from this. <laughs> um, yeah, it's changed now. Yeah, but no, I don't know. Uh, the <laughs> so you had like children who might have suspected someone being a witch, they would come back to their parents and start making up all these stories and, you know, the stuff that they'd heard as to what a woman of, who was accused of a witch was doing and she'd transform and she'd summon mm. these um, familiars and things like that. And um, interestingly, the woman who, well, the, the child, the nine-year-old, who was now a woman, got accused for witchcraft. Ah, uh, but it's the three... <laughs> <laughs> comes back in three. Yeah. Like, just, if you if you spent time with the witch, you'd know about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But she got like acquitted, and then they don't have any records thereafter as to what happened. But the only thing that was a saving grace is that the king had changed. So it was King James, and um, the first, and then his son Charles, who uh, Charles who preceded him, wasn't as forward thinking in terms of witches. He kind of was like, nah, I don't really believe in it. It's a bit hocus pocus, whatever, and. Um, yeah, it kind of got dismissed and thrown out. And that was when there was an evolution in what we now is now called like forensic science. That was the beginning of stuff like that happening. Mm. Um, yeah, it's just really interesting. But because of the book that was then published and also shipped out to um, America, that's where a lot of the key trials in the States came from is because of child testaments, testimonies and stuff like that. It's just really like interesting that yeah, do you know what i find that. funny no. is that um <laughs> child, it, it, it a kind child of, regardless of the gender well it, it is influenced to films because <clears throat> that's stuff that then ultimately has its canon for uh, like what we now know and perceive as a witch mm -hmm. yeah sorry what stuff did you say written, Jess? Things that they oh for. no i was uh, i was just highlighting something that i found interesting about about all of that what you were saying uh, is the fact that it goes again with the, 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 the woman can only become a witch when she's of a certain age. Yeah. Up, up to a point before that she's a child, you know, and it doesn't matter of her gender. Yeah, yeah that, I mean... That's the, the only one doing truthful out, wasn't it, with Kayla's character? Mm, that she was exactly. treated like a child. Despite the fact her character was supposed to be like 19, she was the child. She was so innocent and it was at the end with what happened with Kayla's character that she truly became a woman. Yes. Yeah. And uh, she had her initiation ceremony, and uh, it and and you saw her she, the 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 color of her change. You know, um, she she became darker. So she uh, was forced into a darker realm through trauma. I think you see that quite a lot in um, well decent witch films. Is witch films is. Which films? <laughs> films is. The, um, the other side of which films I wanted to go back to, just as like as uh, one of obviously one of the most famous witch films that we haven't named. The yet. Blair Witch Project. Yes. Yeah. I was uh, waiting to find a, a good segue to talk about it, but it's like <laughs> it's a, it's an interesting one because obviously you you're kind of removed from all of those ideas. It's more that these documentarians have gone out to look for the Blair Witch. That's the whole aim of it. And then when they're actually out there, they don't really know what... They're looking for the, the stereotypical things, but the biggest, most scariest thing is the fear itself of what is out it's there. It's the fear of the unknown, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, and it's interesting to have a witch, which we know what a witch is. We get the whole story of who the witch is at the beginning of the film from all the, the locals. So we build this image of what we think it's going to look like. Yeah, and I mean, like, I, th I think the, the whole thing with that with that film is is that they are going out into a, a, another territory that they are not sort of in control of. They are yeah, not yeah. sort of, uh, you know, that they they're not at home in this in this forest, and uh, you know they they've almost like walked into into a sort of trap, uh, if if anything, um, and yeah, like that that's the thing about that that idea of the witch is that it can be a distant thing it yeah. can be something that's almost like uh, not seen or on the horizon it, you know that's that's influencing things without actually presently being there you well know? i suppose if mm. magic was real like some of the best magic would be the magic that drives people crazy without you having to see what's happening right mm. so just seeing a couple of like the occult sticks lying around and the fact that every turn they go they're lost and the arguments they build within them 
that's probably more valuable to make him more vulnerable for the witch in, in that regard. Sure. Well, it kind of goes back to what kind of defines a witch, doesn't it? Is that it is the fear of the unknown. They're yeah. like potentially they're cursing people, they're casting spells. It's like, but what are these spells? How are they doing that? So mm. automatically, because someone doesn't know and can't fathom it, like um, process it properly, then oh well, we need to get rid of that situation. And the Blair Witch Project kind of does that really well, mm. is that they think they know what they're getting themselves into. They think it's a bit hocus-pocus. I've said that too many times on this. <laughs> um, we'll, talk, we'll talk about it in a minute if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, like, um, yeah, so it's just really interesting that whenever they do go into that environment, they're completely out of their depth. We- and it's just all these unknown things that are happening. And like you said, Sam, it's like little things where you have the... You know the is it the sticks and stuff? Yeah, yeah. And um, that are just hanging and like in the uh, dirt, and you're sort of like, holy smoky joes, what the hell is going on here? Yeah, see, because we know it's classic <laughs> iconography. We know it's witchy symbols. We've built this image in our head of what we're looking to like scare the shit out of us, and that's kind of scary. And that's quite a clever skill to put that in your mind. And for some, maybe the ending, they'd be like, oh, well, there was no witch, but that's what makes it great. I think it's also a good. But is it, there? It, like there might be. Yeah, it's tricky, isn't the, it? The kind of the kind of soft magic that you see in sort of witch films is quite is quite good for being able to do interesting things with the narrative as well because you can have characters do things that would be out of character, um, especially when you're not sort of like forced to overly explain everything because there is this assumed sort of uh, you know hidden magical hand yeah. which is essentially the writer's hand really, yeah. but. You know, it, it, you're you're allowed to use that vehicle through the witch to do those things. Yeah, and also like with with magic effects, sometimes it's better not to try and do whatever yeah. CGI effects you have because <laughs> it never looks good. It can be it can look cheap as hell, and I think it's especially in a horror sense, you don't really want to see like lightning coming out of their fingers. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, and I, I think that like there's a there's a lot more power in like the. A, the words someone says when yeah, they're yeah. intending harm or intending something, mm. particularly from a, from a, a woman, there's a, there's a difference in the way that a woman performs that sort of like uh, aggressive kind of um, uh, wording or, or forceful wording that that comes across differently to a man. With with a man, it comes across much more like there's a threat of violence. Yeah. Um, whereas a, yeah, when you have that sort of characteristic of of the witch sort of just saying some words and making mm. you do something that's so like, yeah, it's so powerful. Mm. That comes down to the manipulation again, right? Yeah. yeah. But um, I've just suddenly, it's just suddenly dawned on me um, of a time when um, a witch has actually targeted not only men, but women as well. Snow White. Oh yeah. And that's quite a, an old story really. Um, and again, that's, that's an, a, that's a woman scorned because she's, She's outdone. Yeah, the new young pretty thing into her being the old thing kind of right. Thing, isn't it? And what what uh, what parallels would that offer in terms of like maybe a woman who's then reaching her next stage? You know, where she's uh, her youth, her value is slowly epping away. Um, so all she's then left to do is is destroy. <laughs> you know, any competition, and um, that that changes her value. So it's 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 an interesting one where. Uh, Another st- another depiction of a, a witch is is often the old hag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And randomly, like, because I'm tr- I, my mind's gone blank on a film, but American Horror Story with Jessica Lange's character. Oh yeah, like, Coven. That, that's her whole thing is that she's older and there's going to be yes. the new young one coming, yeah. in, but she's still you know the top witch. And it is a weird one because like. It's the it's the um it's like the war within the gender as opposed to mm, just the two definitely. genders at war with each other because that's always yeah. there yeah but sometimes it can be within and it is usually Absolutely. a pride thing of being the the hierarchy and seeing that there is someone who is going to surpass her and there's there's no way around it really they have that in Stardust as well don't they Where yeah Michelle uh, yeah. character is very much like generally it's a thing you see in the children's films with kid with witches because you can't really get into massive gender politics but you can always play with the old hag who yeah. used to be beautiful but she's a bit evil and then there's the young thing because again like you said Snow White kind of leads the pathway towards those films mm. but then you've also again leading back to Hocus Pocus we're getting to it <laughs> 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 where they they literally suck the youth out of the yes. children yeah, yeah. you know and they've only got so long to do it so it's this 
this race against time before they're turned into stone and they're not, they're, they literally don't exist anymore, you it, know? It's interesting that they're, like, that they're kids' films, but we're, we're seeing more that depiction of the old hag that wants youth, whereas obviously more adult-focused witch films is more about how powerful that woman is because of either the trauma they've gone through or they just are that powerful and you score me, you'll see what's going to happen kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. It is interesting that we think it's okay for the kids to see the old hag who wants I to know, right? Through. It's a weird one. What's the yeah. message? <laughs> what are we really trying to say? <laughs> Don't call <laughs> your nan. <laughs> Beware of the old hag. <laughs> so guys, we hope that you enjoyed our um, talk this week. As ever, please leave a comment. Let us know your favourite witches films and uh, why. And uh, please leave a like, hit the notification bell as well to get reminded for everything Trash Arts and check out our website which is www.trasharts.co.uk. We've got some brand new merch on there so please give it a look, give us some support. Um, and other than that, Trash Arts take out. Bye bye. So Thanks bye. Jess. <laughs>